Hey guys, what's going on? It is a beautiful day today. I am on the boat with my dad, my mom, we got Victor, and we are starting out our day like we start out almost every day on the boat fishing, and that is with catching bait. We never buy bait, we always catch it ourselves. And right now we have a chum bag in the water and our plan is to try to catch some ballyhoo. So my dad's got a cast net, we got the chum in. We are actually tied to an anchor ball. A lot of times we'll just anchor, but we are tied to an anchor ball with the chum out in 13 feet of water, hoping the ballyhoo comes straight to the boat. And if they don't come within, I don't know, 15 minutes, we'll probably move spots and try somewhere else. It's always easier to just try tie up at the anchor ball than it is to throw the anchor and then try. So might as well try the easy stuff first, right Vic? Right. What do we got going on, Dan? I don't see any yet. No? No. We are actually very impatient when it comes to um, catching ballyhoo. We'll sit at a spot for about five minutes and we're like, oh, they're not here yet. I don't think they're going to come. So we'll see. So on good days, they come immediately though. And then on some days, it takes a while to get them here. See shining. Ryan said two dozen. I don't think we got quite got two dozen on the first throw, but not a bad start. Gotta start somewhere. We got half a dozen. We got one big one in there. Look at the size of these. They're huge. Some days you get little dinks, and then some days you get monsters. Like, look at this Look one. at that one. This is what you would call a horse ballyhoo. That's a nice one. Two and a leaf. Some days you can cast that three times and get all your bait, and some days you can only get one, two at a time, but at least we're getting them. Oh, that looked good. Well, it's 10 a.m. Victor's eating his lunch. My dad already ate his lunch, so now <laughs> it's time for him to net some ballyhoo. Yeah. Three or four? Five? Okay, are you guys ready to see the world's biggest ballyhoo? Or at least the biggest one I ever seen. Look at this thing. Yeah. We should just go home and eat him. He's huge. Monster. What do you think? That was the We're last done. throw? We're done. We're done. We're ready to fish. How many do you think we have? Three four dozen. dozen. Three dozen, four, four dozen. dozen. Somewhere between there. Let's go use them. Time to go fish. All right, we're gonna practice our gaffing skills on a balloon. Check out no, no, you're fine. I'm gonna put it right next to you. Oh. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, it's an ice bag, not a balloon. Regardless, it's plastic out of the ocean. That's right. Good job, Mom. Thank you. What is oh, it? Oh, no, it is a balloon. It is a balloon. Oh, it's a star, but it lost oh. its color. You didn't even gaff it. How did you, you must get I a gaff? I don't know. <laughs> Look at this turtle. It's huge. He's really big. Hi. Look at the size of it. Get him up off the bottom, oh, bro. That's Deb. a good one. Deb, real. Come on, get him, get him, get him. Real. Reel him up, Deb. Yeah. Get him off the bottom. Oh. There's a little kingfish on the surface chasing um this ballyhoo that I have out on the flat line. He's like two feet long, the kingfish. And he can't catch my ballyhoo. My dad is hooked up on something nice. Here. Oh, yeah. That might be bigger than Victor's, huh? Uh, no, it's Just a, like it's the a, same? It's a hair smaller. Let's measure his hair. was his was 20, mine's 19. Aww. He's hooked perfectly in the corner of the mouth. Look at that. Oh the oh, hook. Oh man. The hook was barely in there. If you had any slack in your line, like if he would have done a circle under the boat, he would have been gone. Good job, Ryan. Thank you. Finally got one up. We're eating mutton soon, aren't we? Yeah. I'm not eating ballyhoo. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite fish to eat. 
and catch. Eight. Eight. Oh, he's just just 18 too. Oh, he's 18 and a half. 18 and a half. Yep. We got him, man. Dinner. All right, so this is what we got going on. We are anchored in like 58 feet of water. We originally anchored in 50 feet and we were getting cut off a ton. It seemed like we were one, hooking like sharks or something, possibly kingfish, and two, also getting taken under like the reef fledge. So we let out, I don't know, like 10 feet of, of anchor line and we're in 55 feet of water. That's where we caught those two muttons. And then we started getting caught on more rocks, getting cut off under the ledge and stuff. So we let out more anchor line. So we've only anchored in one spot, but we've drifted back like 30 more feet. We have an awesome ripping current today. So that's really good. It has picked up a little bit. It's kind of white cappy now, but it's still a nice day out here. It looks like you got something. My mom's got something like maybe a little strawberry grouper. You ready for oh, it? Ready? Wow, mom, that is the catch of the day. <laughs> you want a picture with your prize? No. <laughs> so basically what I was trying to say with moving the anchor is that when you're mutton fishing, you don't want to be on top of the reef because then all the smaller reef fish are going to mess with your baits. You want to be on the sand and that's where the muttons kind of patrol the wrong, around the reef is on the sand. So if you're getting pulled under ledges or getting stuck on rocks and things like that, then you're too close to the main part of the reef of the ledge and you want to be off of it. So by letting out more anchor line, we're getting further away from the reef, the ledge. So this flat line, after getting cut off with a couple times and messed with, finally had something glued. It ate the bait and went down deep. take a lot of line. <gasps> Did it look like it took you in the reef? No. You sure? My drag's not even tight. Look at that. No, I, I still have my bait. The hook's just pulled. Look at that. It's a sad day. Go, Mom, go! Oh, he's taking line like crazy. You got this. You got him. You got him. gonna get him. Slow and steady wins the race. You got it. Well, I think my, what my mom hooked was probably a nurse shark or something. She ended up getting cut off and it was just, it just kept going. So, and it was just like dead weight, kind of like a stingray, just like stand on bottom, kind of like a nurse shark. So I think it was probably a nurse shark. No, no amateur hour, just professional mutton slayer hour. Whatever this is, it's got some weight to it. Big sea fan. No, I have a fish. I don't know what I have. A rock. Treasure chest. Real estate, isn't it? No. It's coming up? Yeah. Could be an eel. Look at it. I, you can see the mono already. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah that's a rock, huh? Yeah, okay. Nurse. Your drag must be tight. My dad um, finally gave me his rod to try to catch a fish. I don't know what I got. <laughs> Feels like dead weight. What, what, what? what happened, bro? I was three feet from my sinker and the hook pulled under the boat. This is what I was fishing. A ballyhoo plug. I don't know what the heck it was. It was strange. I, I, I don't think it was a shark. I don't think you? it was a shark the way that looks. It was inhaled by something. It was though. inhaled by it. I don't know, but whatever it was, it was big. It was weird. What do you think, Mick? I, beats me. I thought you had a rock until I saw those head shapes. <laughs> they were like, what do you got? A piece of real estate? I'm like, no, this is a fish. I just don't know what it is. Very strange. That's the worst part is when you lose it and you'll never know what you had. What is that? Little yellowtail. You just reeled it in and yep. got a yellowtail yep. on? Wow. That was on a whole ballyhoo too. Yep. I had just put out a whole ballyhoo and Victor just caught this beautiful... No, you, you put out a plug. 
Oh, that's right. I put out a plug. I put out another plug after I lost that big fish. And Victor just caught a huge yellow jack. So I handed my dad my ro the rod, and when he reeled it in, it had a little tiny yellow tail on it. Look at this big yellow jack that Victor just caught. Check that out. Wow. Beauteous. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a great fish. Look at it scoping out. Heck yeah. You got a good fish. Look at that scoop. Just fish from bottom, and it's scoped all the way out there. You got it, Mom. You got it. Just let him run. It might be a big jack. Let him run. If he's running, let him run. And then when he stops running, then you can get line. Look at this thing going. It might be a shark. When do I start reeling? You can't reel until he stops running. What are you thinking, Brooke? I don't know. It stops running now. Okay, listen. Listen, ready? You're gonna pull up and you're gonna reel down on it. I don't think it's a shark because he went, he's, no, he's, he's up he's, high. Yeah, up high and he's going crazy. Well, you're gonna pull up and you reel down. She's got a hang of it now. Now it's coming in slowly. It's a big fish. I don't think it's a shark. I think you've got a really big fish. I don't know what the heck it is, but it's a good one. today we have lost so many fish it's unbelievable some of them hooks just pulling some of them were getting and cut off but we're definitely hooking a lot of fish a just lot of big fish a lot of big fish too we got a good fish on fighting like a yellow jack take it line good head shakes for good head shakes cut you off it's been a very sad day. <laughs> We've had so, so much action, but it's just crazy how many fish we've lost today. From cutoffs, just pulled hooks. Crazy. I think that was it. I think that was our last bait. No, we got one bait left. Then you just pulled hook. You just pulled hook. That was a good fish, not a shark. Get out of here. Come on. Get. All right guys, so it is the next day. We are at the fillet table. I'm ready to fillet these muttons. And a lot of times we leave our fish in the cooler overnight and we don't fillet them the day that we catch them. But check out the ice that's in this cooler. This is like a brand new bag of ice that is not melted at all. These angle coolers are absolutely amazing. Like look. Perfect frozen ice. And we got our beautiful mutton snapper. You see that? No water. These coolers are absolutely amazing. So it is time to fillet our mutton snapper. I'm actually going to cook it on the half shell. Cooking mutton snapper on the half shell is probably my favorite way to make it. So basically we knock the sides off and then I'm not going to skin it. I'm going to leave the skin on and that is on the half shell. In my last video I announced a Dexter Outdoors knife giveaway and the winner is I'm going to pick the person and post it right here so congratulations to whoever this is thank you everyone for entering there were so many people that entered um, hopefully we'll keep doing more giveaways and um, yeah so congrats to the winner and let's get to it this is actually a six inch curved boning knife so make that first cut like that spin them around then take my knife like this. These are absolutely beautiful fish. Victor is kindly letting us cook his mutton snapper that he caught too. So I'm gonna cook up both mutton snappers that we caught. 
Um, Victor's was a little bit bigger than the one that my dad caught, but he's going to cook up the yellow jack that he caught. So make sure you guys check out his video. I will have that link down below. Um, but I'm going to be cooking up the muttons. Look at that meat. Nice and slow so you don't miss any meat. It's not a race to the finish. You want to make sure you get all of your meat possible and the way you do that is to go slow. Unless you're a professional then I'm sure you could probably walk, whack it off nice and fast but I like to go nice and slow so I don't miss any meat so that I get a what I consider perfect <laughs> filet. Look at that. Pretty good huh? Think this you guys is, should drop Rook a like if you think that's a perfect filet. Look at that. I'm not skinning it, but I will, however, take out these pin bones because I don't want to have to serve this and then think about the bones while you're eating. So I just make like a little triangle incision and then kind of just chop it out of there. Leave the skin intact. but take out these bones. Uh, mutton snappers don't really have a bad bloodline, so I'm gonna cook it just like that. But there's pin bones in here. Another thing about this snapper is um, Victor is actually going to make fish head soup out of it. He's gonna be using the throat and the head and cooking it, so we're using the entire fish which is pretty cool. I've never had fish head soup before, so I'm very excited for that. So I guess he is technically cooking his mutton anyways, just in a different yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. So we are using all of it. Okay, there's our second one. And if taking these off, eating them with the skin on, eating the head and the throat you thought wasn't enough we're also going to take these little pieces and my grandma's going to use them as crab trap bait because she's out of bait so we're saving everything else that we can't use for her these guys are ready to cook put them like this together and i'll put them in a bag and bring them home just like that beautiful i'm going to flip the other one victor's going to play his um yellow jack and then i will meet you guys in the kitchen Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So tonight we are going to cook our mutton on the half shell and we're gonna grill them. Now, we're also going to make a mandarin salsa to top it off once it's finished. And then we're also going to have some coconut cilantro rice as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is to take my mutton fillets, which I have rinsed off just to make sure there was nothing weird on there and get all the scales off of the meat side because you don't want any scales in your meat. So I have some olive oil here. Kind of pour this over the fish. And then we're going to take our nice washed hands and massage our oil in. Now, what are we gonna do? Go wash our hands again. Once I have the oil on, you're gonna take your favorite blackening seasoning. You guys have seen us use this a bazillion times. The Black and Red Fish Magic Seasoning, not sponsored, we just absolutely love this. And this is going to be the only thing that we're putting on our fish before they hit the grill. That Mandarin salsa we're gonna make with this blackening is gonna make for some epic flavors. Epic, huh? <laughs> I hope so. Epic. I've actually never done this before. I've never made some kind of salsa for fish before, but I think it's gonna be really good. Moving on to the salsa. Now, for our salsa, we have two cups of canned mandarins, and I drained out the juice, and then I lightly chopped them. If you wanna look at what we got going on, just like that. Now, we have, a, we have one plum tomato. We're gonna put that whole thing in. We have some chopped red onion. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use all this, so we'll start with just like that much for now. 
And then we also have some cilantro, which we're saving some for our rice. So, add up. Beautiful colors, huh? Mm hmm. Yeah, sitting on top of those muttons, that's gonna be good. You know what? It's gonna be epic. It's gonna be epic. Okay, I'm also going to take the juice of one half of a lime. Woo! Oh my gosh. Did you see that? No. It's carted out of that. You're gonna lose? I think I'll be okay. <laughs> I hope you can see that. Okay, so the juice of half of a lime in there. Mango salsa is something that is really good on fish too, but my mom is allergic to mangoes, so we never cook anything with mango. So that's why we're doing mandarin oranges. So if you are someone who loves mango, then try it with mango, but mandarin oranges I think is also going to be delicious. Putting this in the fridge for now, and we're gonna go put our mutton on the half shell on the grill. Ready? Yep. Alrighty. So this is a wood pellet grill. It cooks with indirect heat. It's not like a regular like propane grill where it's gonna flame up on our fish. So how good do those look already? Muttons are so beautiful. So here comes the fun part for the rice. We have jasmine rice in here and then cream of coconut. We'll start out with that much. See how it goes. Coco Lopez. Coco Lopez. We're gonna just send it. <laughs> when in doubt, send it out. And we might as well throw our cilantro in there while we're at it. Oh yeah, baby. Time to take off our beautiful mutton snapper. Wow, baby falling right apart. Okay, so we got a scoop of our coconut rice. A nice chunk of our beautiful fish. And then our wonderful mandarin salsa. Mutton is going to be amazing. It looks amazing. And then we got some mandarin salsa. Okay, Mama, you're first. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Dad. Very, normally, you're first, but we made very, you last today. Very nice. Let's see. Is it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Delicious. Mutton snapper. Crazy good. And this is the best rice I've ever had in my life. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you to it. Wow. Mm. Amazing. I second that one. Wow. This is some beautiful mutton snapper. What I want to say is, how lucky am I? Not only do I get to fish 
with Brooke and Victor, which is an absolute pleasure. Isn't it, Deb? Yes. We love fishing with Brooke and Victor. I mean, we, we have a lot of fun. And then when we get back, they clean all the fish, they clean the boat, okay? Now, how good is that? But now I come over here and have mutton snapper on the half shell, which is my favorite fish, cooked to perfection with that stuff that Brooke put on top was delicious. Mm. This coconut rice was the best rice I ever had. And then if that isn't enough, who gets to sit down and eat a dinner like that and then get three different kinds of ceviche? Not ceviche, three different kinds of ceviche? Come on. This dinner was way, way off the chain. Good job. Both you guys, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Mama, do you want to say anything? I could just repeat everything you <laughs> said because there's nothing else to say. <laughs> it's so great. I, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. That rice, I've never had rice like that before. Usually rice has no taste to it. But this I had seconds and I'm going to go for thirds. <laughs> it's so good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mama. I agree with what everybody's saying. So happy to get off work and come here and have this delicious meal. I thank both of you for inviting us. And it's wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. Yeah, I, I don't think there's much more to say, but that was that fish was amazing. I I really liked the, the salsa Brooke put on top. It was like a refreshing mutton snapper on the half shell and it just came right off the skin. It was superb. Thank you. I'm not gonna say how good it was. You guys can obviously see everyone liked it. But if you guys have never tried cooking fish on the half shell, you seriously have to. It should be like a, a rule that muttons could only be allowed to cook on the half shell. Brick's like, should I do it on the half shell? I've done it before. I'm like, it's amazing. You know, you can't, there's nothing to compare it to. It's just so good. So you did good, good job, babe. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm gonna say something. <laughs> I'm gonna say something about my own dish. <laughs> um, a lot of times I'll make a dish like a new dish and then afterwards I'm like, oh, I wish I had done this or wish I had added something different. You know, just thinking of the way I could have changed it. But honestly, I don't think I would have changed anything with this. I thought it was so good. I love cooking mutton snapper on the half shell like Victor said. And it's like almost a sin when you take that skin off and you're gonna do something different with it. It's just so good on the half shell. So if you've never had mutton snapper on the half shell, highly recommend it. Or like a mangrove snapper on the half shell is also equally as good as mutton snapper. Redfish on the half shell, amazing. Try it with that salsa, is really good. If you guys have other fish that you know of, of cooking on the half shell, comment that down below. I'm very interested because I love cooking on the half shell, so if you know other fish to do it with, comment down below, give me your ideas. So, as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.